Hi everyone, Jake here from Straightforward Emacs. It's my first video back in a long time. I thought I'd do a little face cam, my notes on the left, some slides on the right. Let me know what you think of the format, if it's still engaging. Um, but today I'll be giving you my thoughts on using Emacs in the terminal. Now this is a contentious topic. If you do a little online research, what you'll likely find people telling you that you should avoid using Emacs in the terminal. Just use the GUI. Tramp mode is awesome and so on. And I'm here to tell you today that they are wrong and you should give terminal Emacs a try. Yes, we do miss out on some benefits that come with having the GUI. Now the main loss, we lose anything that's not text. Now that includes viewing PDFs, anything using X widget support, um, or images in org mode. If you don't use these heavily, um, which a lot of people do not, then you will be fine. The second thing we lose, key bindings can also be more challenging in the terminal. Terminal emulators tend to swallow certain key bindings. So for example, on my Mac, I can't really use the command key in terminal Emacs because iTerm, my terminal emulator, uses it for some of its commands. I started using Emacs in the terminal for three main reasons. Now the primary reason is the integration with the rest of my workflow. Being able to stay inside my terminal emulator is a beautiful thing. Now, yes, I have experimented with many Emacs terminators, eShell, VTerm, term. None of them have been able to replace something like iTerm for me. So with terminal Emacs inside one tab here in iTerm, along with a bunch of other tabs, I can open one, I can open two, I can open three. iTerm knows how to handle itself, right? This is a program that is built for the explicit purpose of opening new terminal emulators. I can navigate like never before and I can feel like I'm at home on my system. Another reason is for remote editing. Emacs does include a remote file editing package called Tramp, but as great as it is, it rarely works perfectly for me. And this is a common issue, you read about it online. Editing a few files on a remote machine, usually not a problem. But when you have a large project, especially if you have projects with LSP, right, language server protocol, you're going to run into problems. Now, a related nicety that comes with Terminal Emacs, and this uh, actually turns out to be a huge point uh, once you start to realize it, is the simplicity. Okay, I've been leaning more into simplicity lately, and using Emacs in the terminal forces you to evaluate what is really important. Now, check out my mode line, for example. Look down here. It's a character tall. There's no logos. There's no icons. There's no graphics. There's no moving parts, right? It's far from something crazy, but that expands to the rest of using Emacs in the terminal. It forces us to evaluate what our tools are really good for, right? Using Emacs in the terminal makes me reevaluate that. Yes, it's fun to obsess over our tools, and that's why we're here, but there needs to be a limit. What are some of the steps you can take to get started with Terminal Emacs? Use Terminal Emacs as motivation to evaluate what's really important, what your configuration means to you, and what's still slowing you down and making your life more complicated. So the first step is to choose a good terminal emulator. I'm on a Mac, iTerm2 is just a classic, everyone has it. If you want to try something new, something hip, you can look up Ghosty, G-H-O-S-T-T-Y. It's on Mac, it's on Linux, it's a hip new thing, a lot of people really like it. Um, then boot up into Emacs with the dash NW flag to start without a GUI. So you can go into your terminal, you can do Emacs dash NW for no window, make a fresh init.el and slowly start transferring over what works and dropping what doesn't. Transfer with care. Do not mindlessly copy and paste your entire init.el because you will realize you do not need all of that. If you really want to start cool, you can use this great Emacs flag. Not everybody knows about this. Dash dash init dash directory and you can create or point to a new directory. You could even call like I call mine dot Emacs dot terminal. All right, call it that and everything that you create, your new init.el get loaded from that directory. You will be surprised by how little you need inside the terminal. Accepting the bounds of the terminal might feel limiting at first, right? There's one font, there's a set color theme, um, there's no pictures, but I think you'll quickly appreciate what it can do for us. My Emacs configuration, which I detailed about two years ago in a 30 plus minute long video clocked in at just over 2,000 lines. Now I'm daily driving a config that's just over 150 lines, excluding white space and comments. And you know what? I'm just as productive. I get just as much, if not more, work 
But at this point, I'm getting into the topic of my next video, which is going to be declaring Emacs bankruptcy um, and my new Emacs philosophy. Now, I haven't posted a video to the channel in about two years, um, and I thought my new setup would be a good way to get back into it. As always, let me know if there are any topics you're interested in me covering. I'll try to make a video. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I try to reply to all of them.